Hey, how's it going? So, um, I am going to just talk today about uh, some emotions that I've been having, and uh, that I I just it was like eclipse stuff or eclipse period stuff, and I've just been processing it really, um, especially uh, my own behavior during that period where I completely like lost my composure and I have done quite a bit of work to try and make changes to uh, the way that I deal with other people and myself even because the way that we feel about ourselves, you know, it affects the way that we project outwardly, I guess you could say. <clears throat> but I know that, like, if I'm in a crappy mood, I don't really want to deal with people. I don't really want to, if I have to go out, I don't really want to. Uh, if someone, <laughs> sorry, but if they look at me the wrong way <laughs> or say the wrong thing, like, it's then this is not just me. I know this is true. If you're just not in a great mood, whatever you're doing is going to be affected in some way unless you, you know, decide to change it. And if you're in a great mood, then I don't have to explain what that's like. We can remember that because most of us, I don't know, no, 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 don't get sidetracked. But anyway, um, but it's like I, I, the example of Mercury in retrograde keeps coming to mind that, um, you can't, even though it's like, don't do anything <laughs> is the advice. It's almost like that cut and dry or like, don't make important decisions, like sign a legal contract or something. But at the same time, it's not meant to tell you like, just freeze in place or go in the closet until the, whatever it is passes. And so, um, you get you have various factors to sort of advise you and that you can use your own common sense or whatever to work with or whatever uh with whatever uh obstacle you may come in contact with or whatever you always have a number of ways to sort of deal with things that happen in your life so all of that preamble was to talk about uh, the processing of when stuff happens. And as you see, I'm not wearing my teeth because I can't find them. <laughs> and I knew when I couldn't find them and they stayed lost that that means something. <laughs> it's like one of those weird things that you hear like from childhood if you're in America, I guess, or you're Anyway, it, it's something like uh, God works in mysterious ways or <laughs> something like that. Or, you know, be careful what you ask for. And I have dwelt on that a lot, but <clears throat> I know and knew there was a reason or a lesson in losing them because for one thing, it forces me to deal with like ego stuff because I have stuff that I want to say here and I don't have my teeth. And for a lot of people that's unattractive and, you know, go put your head in the bag and get in that closet and <laughs> don't come out until you have teeth again. And believe me, I have that feeling <laughs> big time, but I also feel like I'm not here for the focus to be on what I look like. I'm here to say something and it's important to me and I'm thinking maybe someone else will think it's important too. It might be helpful. <clears throat> so, uh, it I like I knew it meant something that I lost them and that I had some thing to come to grips with. And the reason why I mentioned the astrology stuff is because like it's kind of a guide for, or or like a, what is that Ben Franklin thing? The farmer's almanac. It's like an almanac kind of, just a little bit. It's like a potentials. 
And so I usually start feeling what the astrology astrologers are saying is going to happen at some point ahead of what they're of when they're saying it, presumably. But I start feeling stuff like two or three days before they're supposed to happen and I've been feeling stuff real hard in the past few years. Oh my god. So this last time that eclipse happened and you know, whatever else uh you know, in the planets in that and <clears throat> so uh I was uh, like really affected. A lot of people were. And I've just been sort of being quiet as quiet as I can and dealing with just stuff close at hand, like only the essentials, not trying to, <laughs> I don't know, exceed my normal uh, capabilities. <laughs> like, I don't feel safe to be all, whoo, gonna go take a risk. And it's not because of the astrological stuff. Like, I just don't feel like, I don't feel like it's a good time. Like, just calm down and <laughs> think about what you've done. Uh, cause, uh, yeah, so lost my composure and, um, was waiting to know about why and just waiting for like it to make sense. And on some level, it did make sense that I like went off as bad as I did and that it's been it, it, like, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting to be pretty much completely aligned with my regular calm <laughs> self, like less than excitable, less than that excitable self. And so I, I guess it's just taken that long for, you know, like, I, I can't even describe the picture that I'm getting in my head. I guess it's kind of like a travel scrabble board. And so, you know, it has like little recessed pieces, recessed places for the tabs and it's like my brain is the was the scrabble board when I was all agitated <laughs> and the squares were like swollen so the tabs wouldn't fit that's what I got <laughs> so anyway the tabs can fit again now <laughs> um <clears throat> but the the meaning of losing my teeth was before the event even happened, the before the eclipse even happened, after like some other stuff happened that got me kind of whipped up. So like kind of four days before the eclipse happened, I was already whacked out. <laughs> God. And um <clears throat> Then I lost my teeth. It, but, you know, when I was whacked up and I was doing things that I now regret, like that I know I made more work for myself. And I knew it at the time, but it was like I unleashed. Uh, and it just was like a flood, the uncontrollable, you know, it was just like, oh my God. <laughs> and um, the message that I got though about losing the teeth finally I get to the point is that what I heard in my head was take take out the bite and I'm like oh okay well that can mean a number of things and um it's interesting because around that time I deactivated my Twitter account <clears throat> And that was something I did in the period of upset that I was having. But it is also something that I've been contemplating for a long time. And it's not for the usual reasons that, that I hear people complaining about Twitter. Because I, I think a lot of people are not on Twitter. Right? And a lot of people that I know have bad things to say about it have never even been on it. So, Or else they have an account and... and like tried it once and never went back and so I feel like we well, you haven't really utilized it then and I actually liked really loved my account to be honest because it had all the stuff I like to look at cute animals pretty like botany just earth 
earth pictures, space, just pretty pictures, nice things to look at, soothing, or funny stuff, or entertainment stuff, and just, <clears throat> I have people that I talk to regular, you know, on Twitter, talked, but communicated with regularly on there from a number of different time zones, and just, you know, international, and it was, you know, it was good, and it was fun, but I, always with the knowledge that, you know, People forget, because it's this electronic thing, I guess, that you're still dealing with regular people on the other side of the screen that you're pressing your buttons at. That's still a person. And my main beef with it kind of was like, if you follow someone back, then they have the ability to automatically direct messaging, which I feel like is a private space. And I would like people to behave as if they would in real life, which is like, if I say hi to you, or if I say hi back to you, which to me was the equivalent of a follow back, it is like, if you transfer that onto the street and you see a stranger and you, and you say hi and they say hi back, that is not you saying, you are now welcome to go in my home at any time you want. You don't even have to tell me. Just show up and start talking about stuff. I don't like that because the things that people want to talk about, in my experience, were, hi, uh, and, the, and they're like a stranger to me. We've never exchanged a word outside of this direct message. I have no idea who this person is that has followed me, and I always would look at the other person's profile just trying to get an idea of it, you know, in full awareness that I could block and, or, you know, block, unfollow, et cetera, if something went wrong. And so I would either get the people trying to scam me and all, like, lovey-dove me up to try and get me to do some kind of weird, like, buy them Amazon card things and, you know, want me to open bank accounts in real estate, and I would just, like, string them along, you know, because <laughs> I had people worried about my welfare, like, this person is trying to scam you, beware, beware, and I was aware, I was already aware, like, long aware of, you know, what could happen, and <clears throat> one, in one case, I went through some things that were, um, like, I could have been wrong. I could accept that, but I knew damn well I wasn't. <laughs> I knew they were fake, but I was actually getting something out of it. You know, like, no one considered that part. Like, why would I continue to talk to this person? Well, this person was attractive and pretending like they wanted to pay attention to me. I understood it wasn't real, but I was just taking advantage of it right back at them. So, no harm done, right? But... Okay, so that's one thing, but I don't want that. Like, eventually, you're like, okay, fake person, you have to go away now. <clears throat> and um, then the other thing was maybe sincere people. I'm just not really sure that would start, like, asking you your qualifications so that I felt like I was a job on a job interview, and I think they wanted, what, to start a relationship or... I, I don't even know, get married. And like, what, a couple of people were, like, pretty straightforward, like, you know, looking for somebody to get married. And But, see, they were, like, claiming to be military people and like, almost two of one. They were on a peacekeeping mission. They had a child with a dead spouse. And it almost sounded scripted. Well, no, it, did, it totally sounded scripted, actually. But, you know, they'd go right from, hi, start telling me about you. And then, like wanting your marital status and I'm like that does not happen in real life okay like whatever the rush is like if you got like cyber courage or you know if they're real like who who would want that like I don't want to go that fast I haven't I haven't smelled you you haven't smelled me those things I know that sounds weird but that matters or you spend time because Online, you don't know who you're dealing with until, like, some concrete things are done. Like, 
my video calls and such. Like as soon as I bring up one of those, like what, like I'll talk to him for a while just to see like what are you after, and to see if they're fake, you know, because it might be real one time. Like I'm not. You know, I don't know the future. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, you have to divine like what exactly you know you what you're dealing with. So, <clears throat> but that is like what would happen. And I found that when it was just someone who wanted to talk to you and be friendly and chat, those people like. I don't think they ever DM'd, like, in a few cases, maybe I dm them, or maybe, you know, they have something to say to me, but usually, it's like a normal human interaction, you speak out in the open, other people are there commenting, because they're there, just like if you're in a restaurant, they'd be at the next table, and they might feel inclined to, like, add something to your conversation, not necessarily an insult or something like that, like, maybe just, like, friendly, <laughs> And that, to me, is normal. And then if it develops from there and you move to the DM and you have things to talk about, well, gosh, that's happened, too. Isn't that amazing? Also, like, real life, you know, like, in real life, when I was younger and less so as I got older, finally, I didn't know anyone's last name. I would know them for years. I would see them several nights a week at nightclubs or at whatever function where there was a live band. I would know these people's last names for years, if at all. <laughs> so, but I still would be so much closer to these people, like still today, if I would see several brands I know, <laughs> in Orange, or two brands I know in Orange County, I'm sure that like I would be invited to their home you know, to partake of something, you know, a drink or whatever else. And so a, a smoke of legal weed is what I'm getting at. Like, not all, like, drugs. No, that's not a thing. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, <clears throat> wow, have I gotten way far away from what I was talking about. But, um, yeah, uh, I had to do some considering um like what exactly have am I am I like being overly sharp and I can't I can't say that I do have like a tendency to be snarky at the very least um I am working on that though <clears throat> and not really for anyone else but really for myself definitely as a tool to deal with anyone else's but yeah, so, and the, the before I go, the other thing I wanted to say, well, I guess I'll have a few things on that, too. I can't ever just stick to one thing, but um, I did some uh, things that I know that can, like, bring me back to myself, like, obviously, meditation. Well, not obviously, because, again, you can't see what I'm thinking, so let me tell you, meditation is one of the tools I use to calm myself down, <laughs> to bring myself level. Um, and, but, it, you know, if you're too, it will, if I'm too, like, wigged out, I can't really concentrate properly, and it takes some work, and that's where I was for a while, like, it really took several days to even begin to, you know, calm myself enough to do, nor to become normal again, like, I was really agitated, but anyway, while I was watching other people and stuff on, like, other channels on here on the YouTube, I saw other people talking finally about how they were being affected, or, yeah, they weren't as specific as the person I'm thinking of that I looked at before coming here, I looked at some other stuff too, but, uh, a couple of videos I watched before I came on here, and, um, she <laughs> had a moment, too, um, I guess. But I really was struck by <clears throat> what she was saying about you feel like you give, give, give so much. And I feel, this is silly, but I feel like she's more legitimate in her giving because she was an educator and a principal at a school and still, like, teaches uh, 
on her channels and I just come here and talk <laughs> and I mean I've given I, I I can't say I haven't given um it's just a different thing but we're so conditioned to like these merit-based things that make something legitimate or not but anyway uh I I like her for a number of reasons and uh she was saying that you give you give you give and you finally hit a burnout point or like you just get tipped triggered whatever you get mad <laughs> that's what she talked about i was like thank god i'm not the only one that lost their mind and then i heard some spiritual stuff and they were like don't worry if you lose your mind it's not just you there's like all this stuff coming in and getting you guys all over your bodies and even if you're you know, if you're aware of what the stuff is that, uh, you know, they're talking about and, or if you're not, it's like, it doesn't care. It's still happening to you. And it is harder than it usually is, no matter what kind of person you are, what kind of Zen you have or not, like it's affecting everyone. So I feel better. I feel better. And, um, I, you know, came to some other realizations about things and I just love it when things become clear. <laughs> I don't like the, I I'm not going to go on further. How much, how long have I been yapping? Okay. That's long enough. Thank you. And good night.